Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, hello there. Welcome back to my course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravi Chandran from uh, the uh, Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. So, this course has been given to you as part of uh, NPTEL MOOCs project. We are on the third week, module 2 and then this is the lecture number 14. Uh, in the previous lecture, I talked to you about habits and then I initiated the discussion on identifying good and bad habits. Towards identifying that, I started giving you some guidelines and then let me give you a quick highlight of what we discussed in the previous lecture. I uh, try to make you understand that whenever you think about habits, you are taking for granted so many things. You have lot of presumptions associated with, such as you have the wrong impression that you can form any habit easily and more than that you also have the impression that you can change it easily. With that wrong presumption, you let bad habits accumulate. In fact, I gave the example of how bad habit accumulates. It is just like the cloth that you keep throwing on your cot or table until it becomes a big pile, just like the paper you throw or the dust that accumulates on the fan. So, initially you do not notice it, slowly it becomes a very big unmanageable pile and then you uh, start panicking and try to do something about it. Now, not all, all habits as you think are easily formed, especially the good ones. The good ones are very difficult to form and most of our habits are unconscious behavioral responses to external stimuli. They are uh, stimulated by some kind of external thing, but internally in our brain it is triggered and then we are made to respond in a certain manner. We look at this aspect more in detail in this and the coming lecture. But then after uh, talking about this, I started telling you about the guiding principles to identify good and bad habits. So, towards the end, I told you about the story of the uh, father hitting nails on the wall and then uh, the lesson that we can derive from that story is that bad habits, even if you change it, will still leave an indelible mark on your character. It is safe and better all the time to work on habits which are good, especially if you think of developing your uh, uh, personality, try to completely remove bad habits and try to develop as many good habits as possible because as I said, even at a later stage when you think that you will give up some bad habit, sometimes it becomes too late and sometimes even if you change it, people are not going to forget that you had those habits during uh, your early days. So, keep that in mind as it was told by the father to the son. So, remember the moral that it is better to avoid it so that you develop a strong personality and nobody points that to you even at a later stage. Now, coming back to our uh, discussion, as I said that this week is full of stories and then uh, uh, at the beginning also I said I am fond of telling stories. I am going to tell you another story. This story is about a patient and then uh, when the story begins, so it is in the ICU okay, of a hospital. Now, in the hospital, a patient is lying and then uh, next to the patient, his uh, wife is there, she is so worried and then she has a very small uh, baby in her hand and then two kids are standing next to her. So, and then they are so worried because it looks like uh, this guy has got some kind of terminal disease and obviously from the face and all that, uh, it looks like he is suffering from cancer. And then the fact that he is in ICU, it looks like he is just waiting for giving his last breath and then he may die any time. So, this is the moment and then they are hoping that there is a doctor, a special doctor and then he is able to do something about it and then they are hoping that if this doctor comes and then uh, uh, takes him for a surgery, accepts him, there is some hope. 
Now, this doctor has gone to America and then he has made his world tour and he is a very busy person and uh, they were waiting for the doctor and fortunately, that day the doctor has said that he would be coming and then they are just eagerly awaiting the doctor with the hope that the doctor will come and then save this uh, uh, patient who is suffering from cancer and who may die any moment and he is with the family and then he has three kids and then uh, the uh, wife and the mother of the three kids, she is so worried about uh, this situation, so much stress okay. and then the doctor uh, enters. So, the very happy to see the doctor and then the doctor has been briefed about the case that uh, this person has been suffering from uh, cancer and uh, they are uh, waiting for him to do some kind of surgery so that he uh, can be saved or at least he can live for some more time. Now, the doctor reads the name of the person and then quite puzzled and then he looks deeply into the eyes of the other person that is the patient. And the patient also uh, looks at the doctor and slowly uh, they start uh, recognizing each other and then there is let us say a flashback and then we go to the childhood of the patient and in the childhood, so he is uh, close with the friend and then with this friend they are growing up. So, one day when they go to the school, so this friend says that, uh, hey come on yeah, you are just uh, still like a kid, let us uh, uh, behave like grown up adults. Okay, then uh, uh, this person asked him like, what do you mean that I should become a grown up guy? He said that, look at this, I have started uh, smoking cigarette and then I feel like a man and why not you start this? Now, this guy was uh, too much afraid and then he was thinking, no, 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 I will not uh, uh, start smoking a cigarette and then uh, my father is very conservative and then uh, we are not from that kind of family and it is really bad and all that. Now, he said, oh, all this crap, you just leave it, it is just fun, okay. And if you are a friend, you should have it and I am your friend and I am not telling you bad things. Now, this guy started smoking that is in the flashback and then we come back to the current scenario that he is in ICU surrounded by his wife and kids and it is the same patient who is suffering from cancer is the one who was very much afraid of uh, starting uh, smoking. But then who is the doctor? As most of you might have guessed it by this time, the doctor is his friend who actually made this guy develop this habit of smoking by telling him that he is his friend and then he should be a man and he should behave like an adult and then this guy was completely taken aback to see this doctor so healthy, so popular, so wealthy and so prized by any everybody for saving people, entire humanity and then his surgeries are so popular and what happened? So, then he says, hey you and then he says, oh is it you? Oh, and then they were so surprised and at the same time then the patient uh, uh, in a kind of stammering uh, voice struggling and then he wanted to ask him just one thing, what about you, uh, are you still smoking? To which the doctor just laughed and then he said that, oh come on, so that was just for uh, uh, the childhood fun. So, I, I just gave it up even the time when I went to college and then when I was serious about my uh, medical profession, I knew that it is not good for a doctor. I just gave it up long before the day I got a medical seat, I just gave it up and I never knew that you would have continued like this. It looks like you have become a chain smoker and then you are not able to stop this habit and look where you have come to. So, I did not expect this from you. Now, what is the lesson that you learn from this? The lesson is both good habits and bad habits are formed by peer group influence and or the environment. It is the people around us or the surrounding that is actually giving us the stimulus to do something and then form a habit. It may be good habit, it may be bad habit, but as said in the story, 
much depends on the individual perception and belief to retain a good habit or to change a bad habit. Now, look at the same environment in both the doctor as well as the patient started smoking. In fact, it is the person who became the famous doctor later was the actual culprit, was the one who was responsible for making this patient develop the bad habit, right. But at the same time, if you look at them as individual, what are their perceptions and beliefs? Now, whereas for the doctor, he realizes that once he becomes a doctor or even before that, once he started joining the medical college itself, he thought that it is a very unhealthy practice and then it does not become of a doctor to continue that way and then he just gave it up. Whereas for the other person who has become the patient, his perception of that was that okay, it is something that I started with my friend and then he got trapped, he became enslaved, okay, he got entrapped in that and then he is not having a belief or a value system by which he can come out of it. So, that is the lesson that one needs to learn from the story that it is really risky in terms of bad habits because so much willpower is required to come out of it or so much change has to come from your own belief and value system so that you are able to make positive change in terms of changing your bad habit. Now, the next guiding principle to identify whether something is a good or bad habit, I just want to highlight this point, bad habits give immediate satisfaction, gratification, but results in poor long term results. So, how do, how do you identify that it is a bad habit? When you enjoy that habit, it gives you utmost satisfaction immediately. Again, I can go to the example of drinking alcohol. Okay. So, evening there is a party, you drink and then you enjoy the party. So, you danced and then you just freaked out, fine. But then the next day morning, the hangover or even that late night when you started vomiting and when you fell sick till the morning. So, that previous day was okay, but then in terms of even the immediate result, it was not helpful. But if you look at good habits, they do not give instant gratification, but benefits with rich dividends in the long run any good habit will benefit you with rich dividends in the long run. So, for example, doing things in time, okay. so that I need not tell you that it will give you rich rewards in the long run. When I said that, I just want you to give you some examples of what we can generally consider in the uh, terms of principles that we talked about. What can we consider as the good, the bad and the ugly habits? Now, do we really have ugly habits? I just put that uh, just to indicate to you bad habit when it is again taken to an excessive extreme, it will become ugly. Again going back to the example of drinking alcohol, in the party, so somebody drank just to a limited quantity that is fine, but in the same party the person went overboard, took lot of excessive amount of uh, the liquor and then he was not able to drive the car, he hit somebody, so that becomes ugly or he was not able to walk properly, he fell on the road, on the mud and then people saw him and made fun of him. Now, the same bad habit can become ugly. So, if it is not checked and then controlled, if it is allowed to go to the extreme uh, situation, it can become ugly. Look at some simple ones, bad habit this side and good habit this side. Sleeping late night, it is a bad habit. Getting up early is a good habit. Delaying procrastination is bad. Doing it in time is good. Now, disinterest in health and hygiene. Now, thinking that okay, I will harm my body, so I am very strong, nothing will happen to me. So, that is bad, you slowly form this kind of habit. 
uh, take for example, in terms of uh, becoming overweight, okay, you do not develop that one day. You may be your fondness for sweet or your disinterest in doing exercise, even doing small walk or your attitude that I do not care, I will eat junk food and then uh, uh, I, I enjoy being fat and plumpy. So, uh, I do not care about what people tell about me. So, that is your general disinterestedness in terms of health and hygiene, but on the good habit side, maintaining fitness and keeping the surroundings clean. So, bad habit, gossiping, you start slowly and then it develops gradually, criticizing others. Now, this side, if you want to develop a good habit, the person says only good things about others and all the time focused on developing self, growth of oneself. Bad habit, this side, any excessive, any addictive habits, whether it is drinking or drugs or even just spending time excessively in terms of social networking and forgetting that there are some really important jobs to do and then you were completely lost in this and then you missed very important activities. So, anything that is excessively controlling you, making you a slave, so that is bad. Now, this side, it is not that uh, a person with good habits is completely avoiding all these things. The person enjoys these things in moderation and especially the person avoids harmful ones. Take for example, drugs. So, uh, one philosophy says that if you really want to know what life is, you should experience everything. Okay. So, eat, live and be merry. So, you even uh, taste what uh, uh, you can say as even something like a bad habit in terms of drinking, they say that even you taste it, taste little bit, okay. but in terms of bad habit, tasting something like a very uh, addictive drug, it is going to harm you, harm your uh, people who are around you, your family, even your workplace and then you just start with uh, one addiction and then you will end up with forming lot of other uh, bad habits such as telling lies, such as even stealing money, such as even thinking about some criminal activities in order to sustain the bad habit. So, one thing leads to other and then it becomes a very powerful chain which you realize that you cannot break it so easily, it has become so powerful. Now, this side simple thing like whiling away time in watching TV or the surfing the internet. So, that slowly piles up. So, I have seen students initially starting with two windows, one window actual academic work, the other window Facebook or some other uh, social networking site is open. Now, initially nothing happened, suddenly a message comes, Okay, it pops up. So, he is just tempted to see who is sending that, he responds and then the guy says, I have put this post, take a look. He goes to the post, from the post there are other links and then he thinks he will browse further. He gets a feeling that, oh, I missed so much. So, what is he doing? And then he sends another thing, the other five, all, other guy also comes. They say that, why not we all chat together? They keep on chatting and by the time they realize, so it is like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock uh, early in the morning when they started sometime around 7, 8 in the previous day evening. So, time just passes only in whiling away, just wasting. Now, this side, the person who is interested in developing good habit, he or she uses time discreetly. Time is seen as a rare commodity, it is planned, it is used in terms of rationing and time is utmost not wasted. This time, this side, the bad guy, the bad habit formed person eats untimed food. So, suddenly 3 o'clock, he or she wants something. So, they go and uh, ransack whatever uh, there that is kept in the kitchen or in the fridge. Okay. And most of the times it is junk food. Now, this time the person who is trying to develop good habit eats in time and eats healthy food. Uh, so, many examples we can give. So, bad habit one more thing is stealing things, 
but then a good habit that one has to develop is to create those habits which will create a kind of image that this person is honest and trustworthy. We will look at more examples later, but I just want to give you a break by giving you one more story and then coming out with one more lesson and a guideline based on the story. This is a story I read when I was a kid and then it left a very lasting impression about why I should not develop bad habits. Now, look at this, it is actually about a mother who loved her son so much. So, if you ask me whether uh, this mother is loving this son less than any other mother, no, perhaps she is the one who loved this son so much. But how does the story unfolds for us? This time the story unfolds just on the last day in which a prisoner is about to be hanged. Death sentence has been given to him, so he is about to be hanged and then uh, just before that, so few hours before that, they come and uh, tell the person that a visitor has come and then she wants to meet you, she is sobbing, she is crying and then she is desperate. So, the prisoner tells the jailer, the warden, he says that, sir, that is my mother. So, then the jailer thinks that obviously the son would be interested in meeting the mother. So, he says that, okay, I will just bring her. He says, wait, sir, stop. Why? I do not want to see her. So, the jailer was very surprised. See, this is the last day, last few hours, few moments in your life and then it is your mother and who would not like to see one's mother just before the point of death and she has come and she is so desperate to see you, why not you uh, give her a chance? To which the son says, you would not believe that I am here because of her. Again the jailer knows his entire story, he says, no, I remember that you just went to rob a bank and then the uh, uh, manager there was uh, resisting and then he did not want to give you the money. So, in a fit of the moment in anger, you took that uh, revolver and then shot him dead. By the time police came, they caught you and then since it was a, a, a murder and then just before everybody's eyes, so now you are punished. So, that was the most important criminal activity that you did and how can you blame your mother for that? He said, sir, you do not know, but I would like to tell you my story. This was when I was in LKG. I just looked at a small pin that was kept by my uh, classmate and then I just took the pin because I wanted to use that pin for fastening some papers. Okay. That day I told my mother, mother I just told the pin from the girl who was sitting next to me in the class. My mother did not say anything. The next day, I took a rubber eraser that was uh, kept by another boy and then I showed it to my mother. She did not say anything because she was loving me so much. Okay. And then I went to first standard. I started stealing pencils. Okay. My mother did not say anything. Second standard, third standard, I started continuing. I took sharpeners. When I reached fifth standard, I started stealing pencil boxes completely and then slowly I was uh, stealing their uh, books, I was stealing other items and when I reached eighth standard, I liked the watch uh, somebody was using. So, when he kept it just for some time and went for washing the face, I just stole it, okay. I showed it, so my mother did not say anything. Now, it went on like that and then I started stealing money from other places like I 
during college, I used to steal money from outside places, night I used to go and then steal some money and people did not catch me. But then I thought that I will just go for a big thing like actually going and robbing a bank. So, that was the time I went and then took the money, but then the manager saw me and then he caught me and then in the struggle between me and the manager, so I had to kill him. Now, if my mother had stopped me at the first time when I stole that small pin for fastening some papers, if she had told me at that time, son, stealing is not good, you go say sorry and return this pin, I will get you so many pins for you. Or the next day when I took that uh, eraser, if she had told me that I will give you much more better ones, but return it and say sorry. Okay. So, I would have stopped that habit at that time and I would not have reached this level and become a criminal where I have to be hanged. Now, do you tell me, would you like me to see her or do you think that I am justified in this? So, the jailer was speechless and then when he narrated this story, but what is the lesson that you get? With regard to bad habits, nip it in the bud. Forming bad habits are dangerous and extremely harmful. Therefore, it is better to nip a bad habit in the bud itself. That is, in the story, if the mother had stopped him, just when he took the pin, he would not have reached the level of becoming a criminal of shooting somebody, murdering him and because of that, he was hanged and he lost his life. More than that, look at the grievous situation between son and mother. The mother who loved so much the son became the worst person that the son did not want to face at all, look at all. So, this can be avoided if you try to nip any bad habit in the bud itself. Now, I would like to conclude this lecture with this note of thought from uh, Charles Noble, who says that first we make our habits, then our habits make us. So, whether good habits or bad habits, first we make them, okay. but slowly they make us. If it is bad habit, they make us bad people. If they are good habits, they really make us good people. Now, again think about that. In the last lecture, I asked you to identify your good bad habits. Now, in this again you try to reassess what bad habits you need to nip at the bud itself and then what good habits you can develop further. I will come back to you with one more story, one more uh, uh, instance in which you can learn some more guidelines about how you can identify good and bad habits in the next lecture. Until then, thank you. Bye.